We've got yeah. Coco next from blackfilm.com. Hi, uh, Ms. Bissett, I had a question for you. So you mentioned earlier that um, at some point you didn't really want to call yourself an actor. So at what point did it become something where you said, I am an actor and I, I do act in Hollywood, this is what I do. What, what film? No, I didn't arrived? ever say that, like I do act in Hollywood. You never Hollywood. did? No, I never said that, never said that. <laughs> no, um, it was quite a long, long, long way into probably, I can't remember which film, but uh, when, by the time I'd reached, Eight, 1980 when I did Rich and Famous I, I felt like I was really an actor and that was compounded by working with Candy Bergen who was was wonderful in that film and gave me a lot and I um, we felt like we were two old broads you know it was good <laughs> <laughs> I actually find it hard to, when people say they just walked out of the village and come to, to Hollywood and they say I'm an actor I think I think it's a mistake. I think it's a mistake to yourself, you know. I think it's a, a, it's not your growth needs to you need to have a little bit of humbleness when you start, I think. You have to learn. So, you know, pushing yourself up above the earth like a flower that peeps out. You better to stay little and then you just learn and then one day you get a chance because you can only be a virgin once. And if you blow the first um part you get you can so, so acting is a, it's a constant exercise you're always learning and growing no matter what stage well, in your you've career got to grow as a human you've got to grow you know you have to develop empathy you want to develop a lot of things for, and hopefully culturally you've got to develop your you know what you know what you see when your eye everything your psychological growth wow i couldn't agree more yeah. it's funny you know i've written 11 books and i cannot call myself an author i can't do it the word really? just won't come out of my mouth People say, uh, how do you, you know, so you're a TV host. And I say, no, I write. That, that's what I say. I write, you know, I, I cannot yeah. say that I'm an author. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Jackie. I got a question from Coco. Hi, yeah, I have another question. So I wanted to direct my questions toward um, Eddie and Alicia. Uh, you have such an intense amount of knowledge about films and this, the way that you watch films. And Alicia, you were joking earlier and kind of saying when you, you know, you're passionate about the film you're watching your friends watching it and you have these sort of notes that you want to add in so I think that you guys definitely have um, you know TCM is a great home for that because people can appreciate and listen differently and obviously really appreciate the knowledge so when you're watching films or when you're trying to introduce someone that may not necessarily have the knowledge that you do what, what's a great introductory like set of films or something where you just say like these they, these are the works that you have to watch if you want to understand how cinema is made as far as sort of a ground floor introduction mm. It's an interesting question. Uh, I, I, I'm going to start, Alicia. Yeah, I would, I would actually try to learn more about the person first, rather than try to force them onto the films. I would rather think, well, if if you like these things, I would try to find some corollary in classic cinema. What new movies do you like? What kind of stories do you like? And because I'm always amused uh, by watching new films um, and saying, well, that reminds me of this film made in 1938 that was basically about the same thing. Th this has always been my thing is like, I always feel that the work I'm doing is for younger people. They don't always appreciate that, but I always feel that it's, it's trying to show you that there is a through line in our cultural history, that we are not making this stuff up right now. We are building off of what has already been created. So that, that would be my approach. I would find out like, oh, did you like, uh, you know, for instance, when people love Quentin Tarantino movies, I always say, well, then you have to go back and watch this, this, and this, because I know for a fact that that's what Quentin is riffing on. You know, so you have to go back and look at the original films. Watch Kiss Me Deadly or watch, you know, uh, something else. So um, that that's generally my approach. I try to be as personalized as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do as well, because I learned my lesson in high school where I tried to start a classic film club. And I went hard with like Citizen Kane. I was telling everyone why they should watch Citizen Kane and no one turned up to my screenings. 
And then the school principal asked me to stop getting up in assembly and telling people about classic films. So since then, <laughs> I've learned to, as Eddie said, to tailor to the people that you're talking to. Um, you know, I used to do a lot of stuff on YouTube on these shows that would talk a lot about things like Star Wars. And so I'd say, well, you know, George Lucas was very inspired by Akira Kurosawa. So maybe we can, you know, go there and get you there. I love that idea of a through line of saying, will you like this new mm -hmm. remake of this movie? How about we watch the older film and um, and just try to think about ways to to ease them in the sort of gateway drugs of the classic films. Something like Singing in the Rain is always a good starter film, I feel, because it's so delightful. You can't help but love it. And it also talks about film history. And then from there, you can go to more musicals or you can branch out further. But um, yeah, there's so many that I just try to recommend to people. But you got to do it slowly because I don't want to turn people off like I did in high school. <laughs> and, 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 and it's very important to tell people, and this is why, as Alicia alluded to earlier, social media can be a real detriment because it's such a cross buyer and it's not a collaborative, caring environment, right? Uh, when you suggest these things to people, you, you can't say, oh, you liked Promising Young Woman? Well, it's nothing compared to, and then cite its antecedent. You have to say, if you liked it, then I would recommend you watch this other film because it's really interesting to see how they dealt with the exact same issue. Because it is like uh, The Bride Wore Black, which Francois Truffaut made with Jean Moreau. It's, it's kind of the same story, right? It's about a woman getting vengeance on these, these guys that she blames for the death of her, her uh, lover. And... Uh, you know, that story has been told many, many times in the 20th century. Uh, and Promising Young Woman is just the new spin on it. Uh, so it's, it's important not to adopt this superior attitude when you're talking about yeah, movies. That's true, because there's been so many gatekeepers when it comes to classic films. And... Um, yes. Yeah, they've been, you know, historically, they've been the older white guys okay. telling you these are the films you should love and these are the films you should watch. And so uh, I like not being that gatekeeper saying you, you can sit with us, you can come and even if you've never seen a classic film before, it doesn't matter. If you've seen a lot, it doesn't matter. Come and join us. It's, it's a great fun pool that we're swimming in here with the classic films. <laughs>